Hey, good morning. I'm going to read out of Romans chapter 2 today, verses 4 through 8, and then verse 11. The Apostle Paul is writing here, the Holy Spirit speaking through him, and he says, Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you're storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. And then verse 11 says, For God does not show favoritism. You know, many people have grown up in a family where a parent favored one child over another. While the favored one could seemingly do no wrong, the other child could seemingly do no right. Now, often it is <clears throat> more obvious to the casual observer than it is to the parent that's involved. That's the problem with favoritism. We are often blind to the favoritism we show. Like the parent who thinks their little fourth grade angel could do no wrong. It must be the teacher unfairly targeting her. Or the parent who thinks his uncoordinated son is the second coming of LeBron James. The coach is just holding him back. Or it's like the neglected spouse who continually makes excuses for their mate's immaturity and insensitivity. People just don't understand him. Now, don't get me wrong. We should be a cheerleader for those close to us. Yes, we should. However, we should be realistic and truthful as well. We can love our fourth graders even as we confront their spoiled attitude. And we do them no favors when we ignore it. We can love our little basketball players while admitting they will never be NBA stars. It's okay to recognize the fact that they play the game because they enjoy it. They don't have to pursue a career. We can love our spouses while refraining from making excuses for their insensitivity. Yes, we can love, even when we recognize that they're doing wrong. This is what Paul is speaking about in Romans chapter 2. God is impartial. He doesn't show partiality. He loves us immensely and unconditionally. However, he will hold us accountable to the truth. Even if the truth separates us from him for eternity. Pray with me. Lord, you share the truth with us in love. You don't show partiality and just ignore our little flaws and mistakes and failures. There was a high price that you paid for them. And there's only one path by which we may receive forgiveness and the consequences of our sin be abated. And that path is through Jesus. By us recognizing our sinfulness, repenting, turning to you, Lord Jesus, and trusting you as Savior. We do no one any favors when we downplay their sin or when we try to make the path easier than what you made it. 
Lord, remind us that you don't show partiality. Oh, you love us deeply, but you're going to be impartial. And you ask us to do the same. Love others deeply, but never show partiality when it comes to the truth. To speak the truth in love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends. Hope you have a great day. God bless you. See you tomorrow.